Okay, Mori Vera Boisai. This is the second class on Anila Doidi Tavshin Chavov. In the last class, we started the Maimir with a certain premise. And we're in the midst of overturning that premise, of, of refuting, of slugging up that premise, and then replacing it with a much more sensitive and deep premise. The premise that we started with is that there are two concepts. One concept is called Nesinas Koyach, and the other concept is called Hisoyderos. Nesinas Koyach means Hashem gives us power. And, of course, the notion of Hashem giving us power does not mean that He compels us, that He forces us to do anything. It simply provides us the means for us to ch- choose to do it and then do it on our own. On the other hand, there's something called Hisoyderus, an arousal from above, an awakening from above, a cajoling, a pushing from above. And, of course, this latter idea is much closer to the notion of uh, Hashem interfering or overwhelming or supplanting our choice and our free will and compelling us to go in a particular direction. The proposal of the Maimer was that the king in the field, Melach Basode, is Nesinas Koyach, is the provision of strength, and the peasants in the palace, Rosh Hashanah Yim Kippur, the king in his palace, is his Hisoyderus. Because when the peasants are in the field, when the king is in the field, Although the king is so revealed, but he's revealed in the kind of way that no one needs to approach him. Nobody is compelled to approach him. He's simply available, and you can choose to approach him. And as I explained it at the end of the class yesterday, last time, that when the king comes into the field, you can ignore him completely. It's your choice. And in Avoida, that means when Elul comes and Elul goes, if you don't do anything, nothing happens. If you did not utilize the Yisraelites of Malach Basada, you're not going to feel like you missed anything. If you do utilize the Yisraelites of Malach Basada, you'll see the effect. Because the king in the field is in no way assertive, is in no way invasive, he's simply present. He's nois in koyach, he makes it possible. And then we choose to exercise that possibility and to make something from it. That's Nesinas Koyach. Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, the peasants are in the palace, there's great revelation, that because it, Dargus Hagilu is higher, Yechide is Gula, uh, special people are allowed into the palace with the king, and of course Yidin are also allowed into the palace with the king because they did the Malach Basada Chubat Atah before it, and that does compel, that does push a person, that just project a person in a particular direction. That was the issue uh, until Pedic Dalit, which is on the bottom of page in some adult. And then the Rebbe asked a question, an obvious question. The question that Rebbe asked is that the Alter Rebbe, when using the Marshal of Melech, Basada says the king comes to the Marshal of Melech, that before he goes into the city, he goes out into the field, and all the people of the city and the people of the field, or, or, and of course, according to this time, and also the people in the desert, are Rashoyim v'yachaylim, they're free to and they're permitted, they're allowed to approach the king, and the king will talk to them. But then it adds two more things. Mekabel kulam b'seved upon him, He greets them all, he receives them all with a very beautiful countenance. Moreover, Mare, he actually shows, he demonstrates, he radiates upon him, a smiling, a radiant faint face to them all. So the Rebbe asked the question, what do these two aspects mean? What does Mekabel kulam b'seved upon him, And what does Mare upon him, mean? Moreover, these two expressions are unnecessary. All you have to say is the king is in the field, and the people come to the king, and that's it. What's the makabal kulam b'seve ponam yafes, the matter ponam sheikh islam? And as you'll see later, this part of the marshal, the fact that the king greets everybody so warmly and even radiates a, a smiling and a radiant face, is going to be the proof that what we said about Elo, that it's only Nusinas Kech, is not true. In other words, Elo is also hisaited us because of makabal kulam. So, if the Alter Rebbe had only put the first half of the Marshal, not put those details, we would go away from the Marshal saying that Elul is Nesinas Koyech and the Yom Neroyim is Hisoyrus. But because of the latter part of the Marshal, we have to find a different solution. And of course, in the last Shi'at, I already told you that solution. Today we're going to learn it. So, we begin at the very, very bottom of page Shin Samach 
the questions that we have are, number one, why do we need these two additional expressions, besides for Melach Basodeh? Mekabel kulam b'seve ponem yafes, and mad ponem sheikhakes l'kulam. And number two, what's the meaning or the difference between the two expressions? Says the Rebbe on the bottom of patience, Amagdal v'yeshloi marabir, but the explanation is be as follows. But behegdem, I have to preface first. Shachidush ba'gilu did gimu midas harach mabel. We now understand that Elo is different than the Yom Neroi. The Yom Neroi is a higher Gili, and it's to special people. Elo is not a higher Giloi, but it's a broader Giloi, and it's to everybody. Says the Rabbi, when we talk about the advantage of the Gili of Elo, even though it's a lower Gili, but it's to everybody, there are two points that I want to observe, says the Rebbe. That be at Gili, the Gil of the revelation of the 13 attributes of mercy during Elo. When compared to Hashan of Yem Kippur, when the king is in the palace, and then it's not as broad a gili, but it's a higher gili, he says, There are two things about Elo and the king in the field that set it apart from the peasants and the king in the palace. They are as follows. Number one, in order for one to be invited into the palace and to receive the revelation of the Hashem that happens during that time, who are your day? Avoid a nihilus. Requires a lot of preparation. Parenthesis. Mufchorim shaba'am v'yechidez go. The choicest people and men of great prominence. People of great prominence. Ordinary people are not allowed into the palace. And of course, we all know that the Reyam that I'm all yidden are in the category of Mufchorim shaba'am v'yechidez go. And the Rebbe said on the previous page, because Elo brings us to that level. Nevertheless, in the Moshal, not everybody is allowed into the palace, only very special people. As opposed to Bechtei <coughs> Lekabala Gila de Elo. In order to receive the revelation that happens in the month of Elo, Srikhali Israq, Hakpolas Nea Melech. You have to do nothing. Just approach the king. The king comes to the field, he's there. This is Nesinas Koyach. When you approach the king and the pre- king receives you, that's, uh, that's all. Anybody can do it. The Benim Shalhu says the Rebbe, this idea. That in Chodesh, you don't have to be special, or you don't have to have preparation, or you don't have to have a sophisticated relationship with the Kaddish Baruch. You simply have to decide that you want to approach the king, says the Rebbe, says the Rebbe, Debe Nimshel, who has said it us, HaKabola Sel That idea is the concept of arousing the acceptance of the yoke of the kingdom of the Bittal, Kabbala Sel. And in footnote 15, the Rebbe references the moment from the previous Rebbe, which he said the first Elo, and he wrote the first Elo, when he is here in America, where he adds these nuances about the marshal of the king in the field, that approaching the king is bitl, Kabbalah sale. And as you know, the Maimon of Lamed Bey, which I talked about last night and we learned in the last few weeks, focuses on that bitl and makes that into the whole basis for the Maimon. Here the Rebbe just mentions that coming to the king in the field requires no preparation, just acceptance, bitl. But then the Rebbe adds the eight chidush, and there's another advantage. Ba'agil with the El on the revelation that happens in the month of El when the king is in the field, versus the revelation ten days of Chuva when the king is in the palace. And the difference is, Sha'agil who the revelation is Gamla El even to such people Hanem Tzayim Bemid Badaliyom As they see here, you have the word desert that even people not in the field like it says in Lukut Tera, but they're in the desert. Like it says in the Maimah, which is mentioned in footnote 16, which is by Moret Merzog in Parshish, page Tov Tov Chof Hey. And the quote is, V'nikra sado midbar ha'kemelech ha'neseye bederech ba'midbar. And the Rebbe here argues that even in the way the Moshle is in Lekut Tera, where the Melech ba'midbar isn't mentioned, it actually means that the king comes to everybody, even the people in the desert, and the proof is, besides for the fact that in that other Maimed, the Alter Rebbe says clearly that the marshal of the king in the field is also in the desert. But even in our Maimed, the Kutatayla, the hint is this. Because since, we know that the whole point of the revelation of the 13 attributes of mercy is Nesinas Kech al Tshuva, supposed to help people do Tshuva. And you see in footnote 18, he references Zakat al Kutatayla in our passion, in the A. So the Yudgim is do with Tshuva. And the Rebbe says, Tshuva kipshuta hi al yonim bilti ritsuyim bechinas midah. 
Tshuva on a simple level is return for sin. It's not something exotic and mystical and lofty. I did mistakes, I did Averis, and I have to fix them. Very basic stuff. Moreover, ikira tshuva or prikasol. The, the essence, the primary idea of tshuva is for prikasol. Prikasol is discussed by the Mittler Rebbe and the Derechayim and in other places. Prikasol is doing an Aveda for no reason. Farvos nisht. Prikasol means you have no yoke. In other words, sometimes a person sins because they have a weakness. They have a temptation, they have a desire, they have an energy. Prikasol is doing an Aveda because why shouldn't I do the Aveda? It's the worst kind of motivation for an Aveda because it means that the person has lost all self-control and all self-respect because they don't need a reason to do an Aveda, they need a reason not to, you see? So a person who is a sinner on the elementary level, at the core of it is this phenomenon of Prikasol, which is a terrible chesarin, and the king visits that person in the desert because that's the person who needs to do tshuva on this basic level. Therefore, the Rebbe says, the Mizem move, and this is also proof, Shagila the El, the revelation, the month of El, is Gamla Eila, is even to such people, Shem Betachas and are very far away. So, what's the Rebbe trying to say? The Rebbe's trying to say that this idea that the marshal of the king in the field really means the king in the desert has two proofs. First is the other Maimid, which talks about it. And the second is our Maimid, the Kutatayda Pashas, the A, Daflamid Beis, where Anila Deidi and the Melech Masad, the Moshal are brought. And the proof that this also means coming to the desert because the purpose of Anila Doidi is a Yin Shudu Tshuva. And Tshuva on the simplest level is Tshuva for Avedis, which is the Yin from desert. So the Rebbe argues that both from the other Maimed as well as from the Pshat in this Maimed, it's indicative that Melech Basada actually means Melech Bamidbar as well. Continues the Rebbe and he says what we learned yesterday inside. The fact that the Maimed says, Shagila de Elul Hubasada Vileba Midbar. In the Kutate, it doesn't say what it says in Admar Zakan Parashis. It says the king comes along to the field and not to the desert. It says the Rebbe, it doesn't mean that he doesn't go to the desert. He goes to the desert. So why does it say that he's only going to the field? Even though it's true. It is a phenomenon of a revelation of 13 attributes of mercy. Moreover, the phenomenon of the revelation of the 13 attributes of mercy reaches the desert as well. However, when it comes to the desert, it's not for the sake of the desert by itself. Why? Because the Be'inyonim, Shem Heipach Ratzin Havaya, something which is against the wishes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Klipa. Ein Shayech Shia Behem Gilelukus. It's impossible to say that Hashem should be revealed in Klipa for the Klipa's sake. It doesn't make sense. It's incompatible. Ella, instead, when the king comes to the desert, it's not for the desert per se, but it should be, be a stroll. Hanim the Jewish people found in the desert. Or as I discussed, discussed it yesterday with you, when the king comes to the field, he's coming to the people in the field. But he's coming to the field itself, because the field itself is only Klippus Nega. When the king comes to the desert, he comes only to the people to the desert, in the desert, not to the desert itself, which is Klippa. And therefore, look at the Teda, there's no mention of the desert, even though in the other Maimon there is. <coughs> The revelation to the people in this desert is Hanasinas Kech Lotzes. It's the provision of strength to depart, to leave. Mi Midbar to go out of the desert, Lisade to the field, Lakaba Pnei Melech to greet the king in a place where the king wants to be greeted. So the Rebbe says, I just told you two things about Melech Basada. The first thing about Melech Basada is that it's, it's without Avoida. The first thing of Malach Basada is Aravah, just acceptance. And the second thing of Malach Basada, it's for everybody. What's the point of these two points? So we now continue. We're on page Shin Samache, first paragraph, six lines from the end, at the end of the line. I'll piece it. Once we add or we insert these two points, that the king in the field doesn't require a lot of preparation, and the king in the field reaches everybody, we understand the two expressions that the Alter Rebbe brings. That when the people encroach, approach the king, Makabal Kula, Beseve, Ponim, Yefet, Yefet, he greets all of them with a very pleasant face. And Mari actually radiates upon him, Sheikh, as a face which is laughing and smiling, Lukulam. And he explains, But Pise, Yesh, Leimar, says the Rebbe, and this answers the question. The Masha goes about Maim, when the Alter Rebbe insists on adding that it's not only that the king comes to the field and anybody could approach, but that when they approach him, the king receives them. And the wording of the Maimon, of course, is Shah Melech Makabal is cool, and the king receives the Mobile Savior put him off with a very pleasant pound countenance. And of course, the Rebbe asked the question that would seem to contradict this whole notion 
of Nesinas Kech versus Esedras. Why would the Alter Rebbe put it in? And the Teretz is a Kavona, but the reason Alter Rebbe does this is for the following reason. Shemad Gish Eskulam. Alter Rebbe wants to emphasize that the king greets everybody. What does that mean? Listen to this carefully. Shegam Eila Shemrak Reitzim Lahag Blaz Pneamelech. There are some people who wish they could approach the king, but they're afraid. They're hesitant. Okay? Why can they not approach a king? Because they're tenuous. The Yitzhahara has enough of a hold on them to put them into a state of doubt about wishing to approach the king. When they have an awakening, will to do to accept the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, to greet the king, says the Rebbe, it doesn't happen actually. It happens only in their thought. That was only in their thought. Says the Rebbe, the Taich, Makabo, Kulam, and Seva, Ponam, Yafis is. The person who thinks about approaching the king and doesn't actually approach the king because he's in such a diminished state, says the Rebbe, Gam Oisom, who Makabo, and Seva, Yafis. The king doesn't only greet the people who actually approach him, the king greets the people who think about approaching him. Vizah, and the fact that the king is so generous, so benevolent, that simply because one thinks about, I'd like to approach the king, but I can't because of all my avedis and because of all my weakness and because of my insincerity and so forth, the king responds to that desire and greets them. Vizad, the fact that the king is greeting even those who are afraid to approach him, aided at some awakens in those people. Rots and Chazav Vitakif, a very strong and hard will, Lahak Bas Namelk, they actually come to the king. And then the Rebbe concludes, Vayideze, and consequent to this, Hey Mizgabrin, they strengthen themselves, Al, Hamenias, Vayikuvim, of the obstacles and the blockages that they may have in the approach to the king. So when the Rebbe asks the question on the previous page, <coughs> why does the Alter Rebbe add Makabal Kulim Besev Ponim Yafis, which seems to undermine the idea that Malach Basada is only in a sin of and not to say it is, the answer is it's exactly the opposite. The Alter Rebbe puts in Makabal Kulim to emphasize the degree to which it's in the Sinas Kayach. That even people who are, have done no avoid, and even people who have fried themselves in the desert, and even people who would like to approach the king and they can't, but they wish to, the king reaches out to them and approaches them. And that's what Al-Tarebbe brings this. In other words, al brings Makabal as Kulam, Beseva Ponim Yafas, to emphasize the kind of people that are able to approach the king when the king is in the field. What about the second statement? So of course I'm going to cheat a little bit and give you the Nekuda that when the person thinks about approaching the king the king greets him and when the king greets him the person actually approaches the king actually approaches the king and then the king gives him the smile. So is a reaction to a person's desire to approach the king and is is when the person successfully does so. Let's read it inside. After he greets everybody, even the people who are simply thinking about approaching the king and don't approach him, actually, then he shows them a smiling face. And the Rebbe now does analysis, yeah? What is the meaning of the word makabel and what is the meaning of the word mare? What is the meaning of the word save upon him your face and what is the meaning upon him sheikh? Let's start with makabel and mare. Makabel means I receive, mare means I radiate. Think about it. What's the difference between taking and giving? A person approaches you and you receive them. You see a person and you radiate something to them. In the former, the king is re- reacting. In the latter, the king is proacting. And that's the difference between Makabal Kula Maseyev upon him. The king is reacting to people approaching him, or at least people's desire to approach him. So Makabal is a reaction. Made upon him Sheikh Islam is a proaction. So Made upon him Sheikh Islam is clearly more. And later then, the Makabal Panam Sheikh is Lakulam, because the Makabal Kulam, the Seva Panam Yafes, is an initial reaction to a person's Ratsan, and Mada Panam Sheikh is Lakulam is a subsequent gift for those who approach the king. Now let's read it inside. It says the Rebbe Dachi, look, Bain Makabal, the Seva Panam Yafes, the Mada Panam Sheikh is a difference between the Hebrew word to receive. And the Hebrew word to radiate is very simple. Who? The Lash and Makabal, the meaning of the word to receive is Neifel, although it applies to something. There's a phenomenon that already exists from the other person himself or herself. 
And it's only that the king receives. What does the other person have that the king is responding to and the king is receiving? The other person has either that he actually approaches the king or that he wishes that he could. On the other hand, the meaning of the words mare is not that he's reacting but proacting. The smiling, radiant face that the king possesses by himself. Which of course exists before the king shows it to the people. He shows it and reveals it. Let's lost it to somebody else. In other words, is much more than Makabal. Makabal is a reaction, Mad is a proact. First of all, the king is in the field. Yeah? Second of all, someone approaches the king. Or as the Rebbe said in the previous paragraph, someone wishes to approach the king, but he's afraid to. Third of all, the king receives that person. Both the person who actually approaches him, as well as the person who would have liked to approach him, but he's afraid to. And then when this person approaches, the king smiles. So there's the, a bunch of steps, right? The king in the field is the first step. That's an Asinas Kaya. The person approaching or wishing to approach is the second step. The king receiving them is the third step. The person actually coming to the king is the fourth step. And the king smiling is the final step. After it's written in the Maimir. As the king receives them all with a beautiful face, he shows them a smiling face. <coughs> Pardon me, he explains. The fact that he accepts the people with a pleasant countenance. Is that the will of the people to approach the king, even if they don't actually approach them. The king receives not only those who approach him, but those who wish to approach him and are afraid. And then, the next step, which is that he shows them, that he shines on them a radiant face. When a person not only wants to approach the king, but actually does approach the king, which is an arousal of tshuva, the person experiences something even higher. Hagiloy de ponem sheikh is the revelation of a laughing and smiling face, which is delamailo, delamail from on high. Hatainuk sheikh tamelech asme, the delight of the king himself. So when you approach the king, the king receives you. And when you've already approached the king and the king smiles at you, you're receiving a much, much higher level. Okay, so this is the, the secret. And again, I'm going to sneak in right here and repeat. Certainly the level of Mada Panam Sheikh is Lakulam. And perhaps even Makaval is Kulam Besebe Panam Yavis. But certainly the second idea, Mada Panam Sheikh is Lakulam, could hardly be called the Sinas Kayach. That's Hashem is in your face. You come to the king and he laughs with you. So how is that only a provision of strength and not that he cited us? And this is, so to speak, the beginning of that transition. But now the Rebbe is going to say what really is the essence of this mind. What the Rebbe is about to say is very, very deep. What's the Rebbe going to say? You want to approach the king, the king receives you. You approach the king, the king delights in you and laughs and smiles with you. What's he laughing and smiling about? But Pashtas is laughing and smiling about your Tehid and Mitzvahs. But Pashtas is laughing and smiling about your Tshuva. Here the Rebbe is going to argue, and he doesn't bring a source for it, he just states it as a fact. When the king laughs and smiles... He's delighting not only in your Teir mitzvahs and not only in your tshuva, but in your being a Jew. And this is the point where the mind changes. In other words, we're no longer talking about the king responding to us and what we do, but, but the king responding to us and who we are. And once you make the transition from what we do to who we are, the question of the Sinas Kech versus the Seder is going to fall away, as you'll see later. Let's read it now inside. The tainugze, the pleasure that the king gets from us actually approaching, actually doing tshuva, and is showing a radiant and a smiling face to us, who lemaila meha tainug the bechinas panigafes, is above the pleasure the king gets from greeting us with a beautiful face. In other words, shemei hesedir as tshuva. When the king accepts us, he's accepting us for doing tshuva or for wanting to do tshuva. 
when the king later laughs at us and smiles with us, this is even higher than that. It's explained in Chasidus. The Sheirish Hashchei, you have this also in the Bar Mitzvah, Chasen Amaymir, the middle of his Moshal, yeah? The Sheirish Hashchei, the source of laughter, parenthesis, Ponim Seichake, says the expression is that in the Lukutateda, a smiley laughing face, is Ba'atmos Atainug, it's in the level of pleasure, which is called Atmos. In other words, Atainug Atme built the work of the level of the light, which is plain and beyond any definition. In other words, Shalamayla May Atainug Habo Ayyadei Dovar, it's above a pleasure which can be. Awakened by something, Tainu Gamur. So, modern part of Sheikh Esakulam is after we do Tshuva. Kavul Akulam says, Maram Tevis, Param Yafis motivates the Tshuva, the actual Tshuva. Kavul Akulam says, Param Yafis is after that, and this is the Atmos Hatayin. So, the Rebbe says the last line of the page, Veshlaim, I listen to this carefully. The Indian Panam Sheikh Akay is Bahanim Shul. This idea, I'm sorry. The Rebbe in the Maimah says that you want to approach the king and you're afraid. So the king receives you. And by receiving you, you become unafraid and then you approach him actually. And then he smiles at you. And that, that latter smile is a tiny, which is even higher than Tshuva, says the Rebbe, I want to add something critical. That Bahanimshal, the way this applies to Avoida, is that the idea that when the king is in the field and we're afraid to approach us, and he shows us that he's accepting us, and we actually approach us, and we actually do tshuva, and then he laughs, says the Rebbe, this laughter is hatainuk de lamailo, it's the delight of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, shabi Yisrael Hatzvah, and the Yidin themselves. Not in the Tehra of Mitzvah, Yidin, not in the Mitzvah of Yidin, not even in the tshuva of Yidin, and Yidin themselves. And this point is the Chiddush of the Maimah. Turn to Peitzah Machvav, Shin Samachvav, Shalom Maila, Me Hatainuk, it's above the pleasure, the delight, Shemikia Materu Mitzvah the soul of the Yiddish guy Tayra Mitzvah we perform. And he adds Lamay Lagama Ya Tainuk Shmavedisa Chuva. It's above the delight that Hashem will get from work of Chuva, because the work of Chuva is also a relationship with him. But instead, the Tainuk Zebami Atzvas. This delight comes from Nebishta himself, delighting in Yidin themselves. And this is the Khidish. That the king in the field is available to us. It's called Nasin Askaya. The king in the field responds to this most minute motivation from our angle. The smallest sign of interest in approaching the king is greeted by the king. And then we approach him and he delights. Says the Rabbi delights in our Yiddish kite, he delights in our chuva. But here there's one final point. He delights in us, Yidin themselves. Says the Rabbi, and by showing them this laughing face. This pleasure is revealed to the person. Who's awakened to do tshuva. <coughs> and of course we know it's not because this delight is from tshuva. This delight is actually from the etzim and of a yid. The tshuva is lower than it. But nevertheless it awakens a yid to do tshuva also. This awakens in the Jewish people. Come on upon and plan like a face mirrors the face. In other words, we respect HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaTainuk Belakus. So we should have pleasure in godliness. In the kind of way that it yields pleasure from godliness is It's not something which gives us pleasure that's meaningful to us, that's special to us. It's what we are. And this gives a yid an additional power. To strengthen himself even more. From all kinds of obstacles. In other words, after the king responds to our tshuva, with this deep delight, we're, we're able to do a tshuva which is even on a higher level. So, Mare Ponim Sheyaches Lakulam is out of the box. There's no way you can call Mare Ponim Sheyaches Lakulam the Sinas Kech. It's absolutely Hisaitis. The Ebishter smiles at us, laughs at us, and we respond to the laugh with a desire to do tshuva more, with a desire to express our Jewishness more. So, we're back to the question. And that's how Pedic Vav starts. Vitzar Achlav, and the question is, and I'm going to dare say, that this is almost a rhetorical question. The Rebbe is asking the question, even though the question does not need to be asked. It's so obvious that Mare Ponem Sheikh Kes Lukulam could hardly be called Nesinas Kech. It's, it's a, it's a in-your-face inspiration from Kaddish Baruch. The May Hanal move on once we added our interpretation from a Kabbalist Kulam and Sayyid Ponem Yafis. And we even added the Mare Ponem Sheikh Kes Lukulam. Now, listen. If we'd only say the first thing, Makabalas Kulam Besev Eponim Yafis. And it wouldn't say the second thing, 
We could still say that that's still Nesina Skaya Echadatis Eiris. Why? The king comes to the field. We're afraid of him. He shows an interest in the tshuva which we're thinking about doing, and he receives us. But that laugh that follows that, which is Ma'ir, even higher tshuva, this is for sure Eiris. Says the Rebbe. It's impossible to say what we said at the beginning of our Maimon, that the king in the field is only a provision of strength and not a pleasure, not a reward. When the king is in the field, there's a freedom and a possibility. <coughs> Pardon me. For every person to receive his countenance, says the Rebbe, that's not the case. It absolutely stirs and compels the person as if it's taking away his free will. The king greeting them, but more importantly, he subsequently shows them a smiling and a laughing face. Says Rebbe, you can no longer call that it awakens them to do tshuva and awakens them to do tshuva in the kind of way where he, so to speak, asserting himself upon them, so to speak, stealing their free will, so the question is returned. How was that all Nasinas Kech? El is still the person's own personal initiative. If we now know that the Makabal is Kulam Beseva Ponam Yafis, but more importantly, the Mare Ponam Sheikhes Lakulam is an in your face Hisoidus, how can you reconcile this kind of overt Hisoidus and idea of Isidus Latat and Ilade? Then you have one more paragraph. This one paragraph is funny. You know why? Because what he says in the next four lines, earlier in the mind, he said exactly the opposite. He said it simply wasn't true. Now he's changing his mind. And I guess the simplest way to understand the next four lines is to say that once the Rebbe argues that Ma'ad Panam Sheikh is not Nisina Sheikh, but to say to us, it makes sense to reverse the argument that we had before about uh, the king being in the field alone. If I want to add the Indian Zesha Gild El. The fact that we're now arguing, based on the Makabal Kulam Basavi Panam Yafit, and particularly based on the Mara Panam Sheikh Isla Kulam, that El is laid, Aknasinas Kech, it's not only helping us do the Avoida, El Agama Eder, it's waking us up. Says Rebbe, move on Gami Klolos Ha'inyan the Malach Basad, the Be'emis. Even if you didn't have Makabal Kulam Basavi Panam Yafit, even if you didn't have Mara Panam Sheikh Isla Kulam, just the king in the field is enough. To say that it's not just the sinner's care, but also his satyrs. Why? The Kashar Melak Basad, the king is in the field. Had in Asa was there, first of all, Yashla Chalecha to the Shus Vichelis, Lahag Bosnia Melak. We're free to approach the king if we desire. It says there, but there's another point, Hine. Hayadia Shal Ha'am Shah Melak Basad, just knowing that the king is in the field. And look at the next three words. But I say, Mokam Shahim Nim Time, that the king is in the same space with us, and there's something very exotic or Mysterious about that statement that the king is in the same sphere in the same space with us, may aided etzlam and will awaken them a will, lahakwas me'amelch to receive the king. So, what the Rebbe is saying here is that even though earlier in the Maimon I said otherwise, I'm now going to say that even if the king in the field, Marshal, wouldn't have the last two parts, mare ponim sheikha kes lakulam, makabal is kulam, beseva ponim yafes, but simply the idea of rashoyim v'yechelim, anybody can approach the king, I would have already then. Ask the question that the king being in the field, in the same space as everybody else, cannot just be called Nesina Skeich, it has to be called Nesina So what just happened is, we started a mime with a premise, and after much discussion, we threw that premise away. We started the mime with the premise that El is Nesina Skeich, and Yom Neroyim is Nesina <coughs> We're now saying El is also Nesina No, so if El is also Nesina so what's the Pshat Anila day? In the next five lines, the Rebbe is going to answer this question. And the answer is going to be, well, I said to you today in my introduction. And yesterday I gave it to you at length. This is the vort. The vort is the following. When somebody wakes you up to discover who you are. He's waking you up. He's pushing you out of yourself. It's not just Nesina, it's Kerech, But since he's waking you up to discover your real you, that cannot be called Hesedrus. Say this, but somebody wakes you up to do something, even if it means to do a mitzvah, or even if it means to do tshuva, since it's outside of you, that awakening is called the sadness. But if he's waking you to find out what you are, the yid inside, even though it's bederech his it's not the his 
because he's not helping you go out of yourself. To the contrary, it's helping to be what you are naturally. Let's read it inside. The people have a desire to approach the king. Why? They love him. Huh? Why? The king's a nice guy. Why? The king is available. The king is powerful. They want to be around him, right? Says the Rebbe, no. There's a deeper Indian. And this deeper Indian goes to the halacha of Melech. And it goes to the Hasidus of, of what are Yiddis. He says, when you decide and you actually do, in fact, approach the king, that comes from the very essence of the people. In other words, this is not people reacting to something that they could gain. This is people reacting to what they are. The kivan shahamelech walev jukalam. This is the nigla. Sint, it says in the Rambam. <coughs> that the king is the heart of all the people. In other words, the king and the subjects are one. Lachain, therefore, is gachos shahamelech, when the people are attached to the king. It's not an attachment to something other. We can start debating whether it was worthwhile or not. But rather, hu be'etzem, it's a yusom, it's their attachment to what they themselves are. So what's the Rebbe adding? What's the Rebbe adding? What's the Rebbe saying now that he didn't say before? What he's saying now that he didn't say before is that the motivation that comes from the king is like a motivation that comes from ourselves. Because the king is our heart. We all know the word that the Rebbe said. The Rebbe repeated it by Fabreng. The Rebbe was cross-examined and deposed about the Pasha Sasforim. At the very end of the deposition, the Rebbe said, that she was asked one final time, to whom do the books belong? And she said, the books belong to Hasidim because my father belonged to Hasidim. Deb repeated this by Fabreng and explained, a Rebbe is the most powerful man in, in, in a Rebistave, obviously. A king is the most powerful man in a country. He doesn't own his sacks. Everything he owns belongs to the people. He belongs to the people because he's the heart of the nation. So when the king comes to the field, and the problem is that it's not just a sin as care. It's actually a Seyedus. It says, it's true, it is a Seyedus. But it's for what? To be a better Yid? No. It's a Seyedus to reveal the king within us. The Melech, which is inside of ourselves. Allah, it is only. It's still possible. When the king of the sub and the subjects are far away. <coughs> Pardon me. If shit, it's conceivable. Their attachedness to the king. And therefore the desire to approach him, Yibahelim should be revealed. But the king is in the field. And the Rebbe says the same expression he used in the paragraph before. In the same space where they are. So by being in the same space where they are, he's not changing them. By being in the same space with they are, is encouraging them to go to what they truly are. Says the Rebbe, Haratzin hu Their will to greet the king because this is their truth is revealed. So what's the Rebbe's answer? What's the Rebbe's answer? The Rebbe's answer is that the difference between Elul and the Yom Neroim is not the difference between the Sineskeich and the Sederos. The difference between Elul and Yom Neroim is the difference between the Sederos and the Sederos. So what's the difference? The answers are Shani Kippe were all very sophisticated and were very high levels and were very approached to the king and Yechidei Segula. And uh, what did the Rebbe say? Nefcharim um, Shaba'am. Yeah. But one thing, what's being aroused in the Jewish people, doing that said, as you may chuba, they should be better Jews. Teira mitzvah chuba. In Elo, the king's presence in the field is more subliminable, it's much hidden. Okay? But the, king, the peoples approaching the king is because they and the king are one. And the pshat and the maimed is that when a person is awakened to being what he really is, it's never a seder. On the next page, if you look at the end of the Perik Vav, on page Shem Samach Zayin, the Rebbe says these words, the last few words of, of Perik Vav, when the Ebishter reveals himself to a Yid in a way to help Yid get in touch with his own essence, it's like Hasiba, it's only an indirect cause. It's not a direct cause, which pushes a person. But an indirect cause, which encourages a person to approach the king. <coughs> but the point is that in Elo, there is an arousal of a Yid. But it's an arousal of a Yid, not for Tehidah Mitzvah, not for Tshuva, but to re- reveal his own Yid. And this is never considered a Seder. So to go back to the beginning of the Maimir, 
What's the difference between the king in the field and the peasants in the palace? The king in the field is his soirus to get to your own etzim. And that's never his soirus. It's only in the sinas koyach or siba. And the peasants in the palace is his soirus to be a better yeteir and mitzvah's job. So we have a whole new understanding of what separates Elo from the Yom Neroim. And it's much more subtle. Much, much more subtle. And what does it come down to? It, and of course, the way that Rebbe gets to this is by analyzing the last two lines of the Moshe Makabalist Kul and Beseva Panam Yafes, and particularly Umara Panam Sheikh Ages Lukulam. Now, what is, what is the Chiddush? What is the Chiddush, right? What is the Chiddush? And of course, the Chiddush is, and this is an idea which we here in these classes discuss occasionally, quite often. <clears throat> Again, I'm, I'm using cliches, but these cliches are very deep. Yeah? The cliche is, what's the difference between Yiddishkeit before the Baal Shem Tev and Yiddishkeit after the Baal Shem Tev? And the answer in a sentence is that before the Baal Shem Tev, Yiddishkeit was about Teir and Mitzvah and Tshuva. And when we learned Teir and we did Mitzvah and we did Tshuva, we were Jews. What did the Baal Shem Tev change? And it's very axiomatic, it's very fundamental, it's very deep, very serious. That after the Baal Shem Tev, the most important thing in Yiddishkeit is not Teir, Mitzvah, and Tshuva, it's the Jew. A Yid is one with the Ebesh. And that's what the Rebbe is Machadish and Ismaimer. The king in the field is touching the Jew, not his Judaism. The king in the palace is touching the Judaism of a Jew on the highest of levels. The Judaism of the Jew is always Giluyim. It's always separate from the person. And therefore it can be called Hesed or something outside of you is compelling you. But in Elo, the Hesedus is helping you get in touch with your essential Jew. That's never Hesedus. It's never Hesedus. Because it's helping you get in touch with what you truly are. It's just Hesedus which brings to an Hesedus. Okay? And the Rebbe continues the very bottom page in Samach Vav to bring a further illustration of this point. <coughs> The same is true in the Nimshal. When a Yid is awakened to do Tshuva. By the awakened, the 13 attributes of mercy in Elo says that Rebbe understand when a Yid is awakened to do Tshuva, that's not really what he was awakened to. He was awakened to discover that he's a Jew. And but mainly wants to do Tshuva. Through the revelation of 13 attributes of mercy, which is called Melach Basada Rashoyim V'yechelim Mekabel Es Kulam and Mara Param Sheikh Es Lekulam. Look at this. Al Yedei Yagil Mumidus Yagil Dei Yagil Mumidus Rachamim Mizgala Rots and Pnimi Di Yisrael. What's revealed is the innermost will of a Jew. Period. Not for Yiddishkeit, but for Yid. Who can move and gam mehamavur behem shechamaymer. This point that in Elo. <coughs> This Eidros and the king in the field is to wake up the Yid, not his Yiddishkeit, is indicative of what follows in the Maimon. Because what follows in the Maimon, the Alt Rebbe is this, that Laachere ha Moshal de Malach Basada, right after Alt Rebbe brings the Moshal de Malach Basada, which of course, as you know, is brought to explain why, that's, why the Chedesh El is not Yom Emtev, but Yom Emtev, he says the following The Shem Kale, who raises Kale, how you give him the Sarachim, um Kalem. There's 13 attributes of mercy, and the first is Kale. And I'm sure you've heard this before. The Rebbe has a letter to Rabbi Yoshua Fogum and Olav Shalom, which he wrote in Tavshin Chesed and Igris, about this, that there's a lot of opinions of how you count the 13 attributes of mercy. Do you count Hashem? Do you count Hashem twice? Hashem, Hashem, Kel, Racham, and so on. In the Arizal's read of the Gil Mitzel Racham, there's two things you have to know. <coughs> and then it'll be easy for you to remember what the Gil Mitzel Racham are. Rule number one, Havaya, Havaya, not. You'd give me the Sarachim there before. They're considered the two cheeks, not the hair of the beard. And the seventh is the emis. The seventh is the middle. You have six on one side, six on the other. Emes is the center. So again, the two things you have to know about the Shita of the Arizal and the Yilgim Midas Sarachim that Avaya Avaya are before the Yilgim Midas Sarachim. The first Midas is Kale and the seventh Midas is the Emes. So the Alter Rebbe speaks to this idea that the first Midas is Kale, which is Chesed. Says the Rebbe, the Shem Kale, or Eishet Kale Yigil Midas, Uma Kairan, Uklalusan. Shem Kale is the first of the 13 attributes associated with Sarachim, and therefore their source and includes them all. Says the Rebbe, what's Kale? Kale is Ein Sof. That's what he says, Kale is Eibishta. 
Ve'inyin shem keilu, what is the meaning of the Ebishah's name keil? Eidin say baruch hu mamish, godliness mamish. And of course, as the Maimah is going to develop it, it means the highest levels of godliness. Godliness is one with God, as the Pasuk says, keil avaya vayoyer lono, the inyin of shem keil is to be magala lakus. The age, who come ahead? Revealed in the light of Hashem is the same thing as Kayach revealed Abish to himself. This explained in Hasid is the difference between Eid and Shefa. That Shefa means a flow. Shefa means that the Mashpia is diminishing himself to give to the Makabal. So on the one hand, it's obviously much less. On the other hand, it's much more optimistic. And and light is like the source. So the Rebbe wants to argue that the idea of Oyer, which is Oyer, Me'ena Moir, means that Oyer is Atmos. Kale is Ein Saf himself. And therefore, Ubechol Echod Mi Yisrael Me'er Gilizeh. And the first of the 13 attributes of mercy is Kale, which goes on Ein Saf, which goes on the Eberstead. And every Yid has this. How do you know it? It's in our name. Yisrael. If you say to Mizeh Moreover, Shagil the Shem Kale, Shwalachat Mi Yisrael. The revelation of godliness as it is by itself, as it's found in every single Jew, is Hasar Vahamejah B'Kebir. It's really the dominant force within that Jew. You know why? The Yisrael HaMesias, Yud, Sar, Kel. The five letters, the word you saw, three things, Yud, Sar, which means minister, and El. That every Yid is a Balabayas over Shem Kel. Every Yid is a Balabayas over Ein Seif. In other words, every Yid is a Balabayas over the Abish to himself. The Yisrael Umalko B'Chadar, the idea that a Yid is above Tere Mitzvah and Shuvah. But that a yid has an inherent connection to the Abishta, which is the deepest and the highest thing, this such a soul, Sar Kael. That he does a balabayas over a lakusna madrega of Kael. The Yisrael, who is Yud Sar Kael. The word Yisrael is an abbreviation of the, it's, it's, it's the letters Yud and then the word Sar and the word Kael. Is that what this means? Shabit the lelakus shavalachat means all the way. It is bittel talakus. It's a bittel shalamayla mitam vadas. The bittel is not based on reason; it's above reason. Kibi yisrael because in the word yisrael or in yid, who gilu yedin say baruchu atzmei mamish. It's revelation of godliness itself. Mamish shalamayla mish talshus, which is above his talshus. Vayadei gilu yud gimel mitaserach mem shabe elo when elo comes. And Hashem reveals the thirteen attributes of mercy. He's not revealed the thirteen attributes of mercy to be made a or to be made a mitzvah only. He's revealed the thirteen attributes of mercy to reveal a yid. At the head and the root, the source and the general basis of all of them is kail. Wakes up the ale in every yid. In other words, not giluya mitzvah. Not the Yiddishkeit that makes the Yid into a Yid, but the Yid that makes the Yid into the Yid. V'zehu, and therefore, even though we've changed our mind completely, and we've agreed that El is not Nasein Eskayach, we've agreed that El is actually a Seyderus, just like Yom Nerayim is Seyderus. Nevertheless, Havei did the El, he had neither day. Havei did we're working on our own. In other words, after we changed our mind thoroughly, and we've made it very clear, that Elul is his us, and not only in the sin of because of because of Maraparam Sheikh is the cool of many other things. We call Elul Anila Day the work we do on our own. How could both, both be true? And the answer is even the Lucha is revelation of which is moving us, which takes away for our own initiative. The Tarit is Kia Gilo Shemilmailu. When it comes Elul, and the Abish is revealed. And he wakens us to be close to that Kaddish Baruch Hu. It's like Siba. It's only an indirect cause. Shal Yodim is Gal Rasen Apimit Adam, which will the two will of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. The Rebbe seems to be saying that the Anila Deidi of Elo expresses not just the Yiddishkeit of the Yid, but what the Yid is by himself. And therefore, the Soyrus is not the real cause. The Soyrus is only a Siba to reveal what a Yid is. In other words, you don't need to be motivated to be you. I don't need to be motivated to be me. I may need to be motivated to be like you. You may, may need to be motivated to be like me. But nobody needs motivation to be themselves. But the fact of the matter is many people do. And the answer is the motivation of a person to be himself is not really a motivation. It's simply waking up. It's simply getting away a blockage. And therefore, Elo is king in the field. And king in the field is absolutely and it's not <coughs> it's, it's not only Nasin Eskayach. But it's a it's a hisaidus for a yid to discover his own yidhood. 
And therefore, it's not the day of Seirinus. It's only the day of Seirinus Kayach. Uh, now, Rabbi Yisrael were holding Siv Zayin. In other words, we have two pages of a, a six-page Maimah left. You're almost a third of the Maimah. But I must be candid, or I'm choosing to be candid, as it were, to say, the Nikud of the Maimah, the point that the Rebbe is trying to teach of Melech Basad has been made. That Melech Basad is not arousing a Jew to be more involved in Yiddishkeit. Melech Basad is arousing Yid to become more in touch with his oneness of the Kaddish Baal. That idea, that Melech Basad is trying to arouse a Yid to become more in touch with his Pintele, is always animat, anilatayid. It's never a sedatus, even when it is a sedatus. Because when you help a person get in touch with himself, that's not motivating him from outside. This is him. And the truth is, we need a, uh, a philosophy to explain, right? If I inspire you to do something, it's only considered me inspiring you if what I'm asking you to do is not who you are. But if I'm inspiring you to do something which is essentially you, that's not an inspiration, it's called siba. That, that idea needs... Form needs a body. The Rebbe is now going to make a simple point. And the simple point is that in Chayyid Shalal, there's a Gil Midas Arachem. And the Yudgil Midas Arachem and Chayyid Shalal arouse Anila Doidi. What's Anila Doidi? That a Jew should get in touch with his Jewishness. So the Rebbe is going to say something very fascinating. You know, we always know the idea of Yudi that say Rechaliyah, that Hashem comes into the world as an Aliyah. The two Tekedusha fall down, so they shall have an aliyah and so on. The Rebbe is going to say, Yud Gimel Mides Harachmim, experience a Yud Gimel Mides Harachmim. Because Yud Gimel Mides Harachmim by themselves are Giluyim, they're Resedidus. But when Yid takes the Yud Gimel Mides Harachmim and uses it not to inspire his Yiddish kite, but to inspire his Yidhud, not to inspire his Teda Mitzvah and Chuvah, but to inspire, to inspire what he is, Behatzim. The Yudgim and Midas Arachman themselves have an aliyah from being, I guess, a Hesederos to being a Siba for an Yudgim and Midas the Rebbe said it and says, Yes, Shleimah. Da Yudai HaYudgim and Midas Arachman through the revelation of the 13 attributes of mercy that are made in a Magala, Rotzin, Pimid, Yisrael. They reveal the will that's at the depth of a Jew. Sharots and the Yisrael Bala Kosta, the Yid desires godliness, not Teda, not Mitzvah, not Shuvah. But Lefish Hema Shal Shuvah Atmos, because the Yid is one with the Abishta, and therefore he wants himself. Which is Abishta, says the Rebbe, Nasa Eloi, by Yid Yom Mitzvah Sarach. Yid Yom Mitzvah Sarach will come into this world, in Chayde Shal, to arise, to arouse in a Yid and a Nila, and they experience a Yid Yitzhah Sarach Ali, of a Indian who the Pshat is Isaiah. The Zesha Habriha Bishvil Yisrael. We know it says in Medrash. Everything is for the sake of a Jew, right? Bereshis, Beis, Bereshis. Bishvil Tere, Bishvil Yisrael. Shakavana Bazehi, this means when you say that all that Hashem created is for the sake of a Jew, is Lairak, Libriyas, Ha'elam. doesn't only mean this world is here for the sake of a Jew. Everything they wish to make, including the various expressions of godliness which Hashem provides for some kind of a means to an end, is also Bishvil Yisrael. Gam legiluyim hachinayl, even the very highest revelations. And therefore that makes a point. Since everything serves a Yid, even the Yigil Midas Arachamim is only a means to an end, it's say this, to wake up a Yid Anila Deidi, says the Rebbe, Shayadei ha yudida di yud gimel midas harachamim im kaib. Thirteen attributes of mercy descend from their lofty place, which is Hegel Malchus, the king's palace. And Lamai Lame Ishtachos, above Ishtachos. Now I must, of course, throw in Hegel Malchus, the Lechede is a Seres Yemei Tshuva. Because the whole vart is that yud gimel midas harachamim in El are not Hegel Malchus, they're Melach Basad. But I, I suppose the answer to that question is that the difference is not in the yud gimel midas harachamim, the difference is in the yid. But I don't know. Lusad that to come into the field of Elam has the Bechdel Eid, it will allow us to awaken and to reveal. Harats, Napti, may be installed in the most will of a Jew, not for Judaism, but for Jewhood. Mizgale Behem. It's revealed in the Yom Yisrach. Shakavona Behem, who is really Yisrael, that they exist to serve Yidden. Sheshar Shon Baha Atmos, that are rooted in Atmos, and the Yom Yisrach are changed. In other words, you'll give me Zerachma as they descend from heaven to earth are motivating Chuvah. They're motivating Teh, the mitzvahs. But when they reach earth 
and it wakes up Daniela Doidi. The Gil Midas Rachma raised up from being a revelation which is Ma'ed Tater, which is in Chuva, to being a revelation which is Ma'ed that a Yid wants a Lukus Biet. But then he adds, that when you say that the Yidgil Mitzvah Achim have a Yerida, they come down into this world to wake up a Yid, and then they have an Aliyah, what does it mean they come down? The Yidgil Mitzvah Achim come down to a Yid who's a Benyani, or to a Yid who's a Tzadik, to a Meidim, to a Yid who's a Baruch. The Yidgil Mitzvah Achim can come down to a Yid who's a Rosha, a big Rosha, who's stuck in Midbar, as we called it earlier, to bring him closer to a Kaddish Baruch. It says, Rebbe this, Ve'eshleima. I want to connect this. It says in the Pasuk, and it's explained in the Zaya. Melech, the Sadeh, Neva, the king is a slave. The king, which means the Abish that is a servant of the Sadeh. Even the king. Of course, the king is the highest thing. Neva, the Sadeh, is a servant of the field. Why? Because the king needs the field to live. So the king, of course, goes on the Abish. Sadeh goes on the void that we do in this world. And Melech HaSadeh Neva, the void that we do in this world, so to speak, holds the king. Now we specifically are saying that the void which we're doing is not just the Aved of Tehidim, it's in Tshuva, but the Aved of revealing what a Yid is Be'atzim. This is the Taish Melech HaSadeh Neva. Hashem is, so to speak, a servant to helping reveal what a Jew is Be'atzim. However, there's different fields. Does it ever like this? Well, if he much because of the desire says, I am seven lines from the bottom of the page in Samach Zayi. Man, Melech. Do, Melech, Elah, King is a reference to the higher level of Melech, which is Bapashtas Bina. The Ischab, the Sadi, which joins in the field, Yeshlemi, we should say, Shagam, Mech, Yosek, Kvayochul, Shem, Melech, Elah. Even the life of the higher Madrege, Melech, is Ayadei, Sheyed, Vinim, Shech, Sadi, because it comes on into the field. Because when the king descends from a very high place into the field of this world, Mizgalit reveals Chakavona Bay that the purpose of the Melech is Bishfil Yisrael is for the sake of the Jewish people. So the Rebbe says, Melech or Sadeh never means even the king is a slave to Sadeh. And the Rebbe wants to apply that to the idea that the Gimel Midas a slave to Sadeh. But then he adds, No Chazach. But be Mashakasabaza, we know that the Zayah says is Sadiv is Sadh different levels of fields. There's the field of Bainini, there's the field of Rosha, right? Is Sadiv is Sadh. Sadh the Gedusha, the field of holiness, and Sadh the Liyumaza, the field of Klipa. Yashlaima, I want to make the following point, says the Rebbe. The Indian Melach, the Sadh Neva, the Dilat the Melach, and in our Mayamadi Gilmud Zarach, are a slave to Sadh with the purposes realized. In other words, parenthesis. When the Yud Gimel Midas Arachim, when the Melech descends into the field, Nas Eloi, an ascent happens, be Melech Eloi and the Yud Gimel Midas Arachim, who be Iker, it's more, Al Yadei Shahagilid Yud Gimel Midas Arachim, it's through the 13 attributes of mercy. Shalamayla Mehishtalsu, which are above Ishtalsu, parenthesis, the Beklolos, who Melech Eloi, who Gamli Yisrael, and I'm saying, be Midbar Sadat Al Yomad, that's particularly. When they descend to a Sada del Yumazer, to a Jew who's lost in the desert. Because Aidezem is Gala, this reveals Harats and Pnimi shall have the true will of a Yid. Not just the true will to serve Hashem, but the true will because they're one with Hashem. The Yaitzim and Midva, they depart from this desert, Sada del Yumazer, and they emerge, turn to page, Shin, Samaches, the Sada del Kedusha, to the field of holiness, Lahak plus Nehamela. In other words, Yud Gil Mitzrach was supposed to wake up a Yid. And the Natch was supposed to wake up a Yid to Tshuva and to Tehid and Mitzvahs. They're supposed to wake up a Yid to the Ratz and the of a Yid as he wants to go with the Abish. But the more lost the Yid is, the deeper this awakening becomes. Kaidei ha Tshuva the Yisrael when a Yid does Tshuva. But what kind of Yid and what kind of Tshuva? Chau Yud Chil Betach HaSadich they were so far away. And the Yud Gimel Midas Arachim, the Melech aroused them. Mizgal Oid said the revelation of what a Yid is Be'etzim is revealed even more. Hapnimi is the Yisrael, the depth of a Yid. Sheretain, Umaham, Miti, the true desire of a Jew, Gam, B'Shasachet, even when they sin, who Belakus is in godliness, Lakshi Yitzim, we're talking to Yitzhar about them. In other words, in what kind of Jew do you see that the inherent truth of a Jew is that he's one with Hashem? In a from Jew, 
who learns Teda, does mitzvahs, does tshuva. No. The Jew who is the most un-Jewish, his arousal to be connected to Hashem reveals deeper this idea of Yisrael or Malko B'chadoy. Reveals deeper this idea that the connection with the Yid and Hashem is not just because of Yiddishkeit, it's because of what he is. And therefore when the Yedgimu Mitzvah Sarachamim, or Melech, pardon me, are the southern Neva, they come down to wake up a Yid, the lower they go, the greater the Ali and the Yedgimu Mitzvah Saracham. And he brings a word from Tzemach Tzedek. The Pasuk says, Ki basoda mitzvah, right? The Naira Murasa is, is, is onus, is nenas by a man. But nobody hears her screaming because she's in the field. Basoda mitzvah, he found her in the field. Tzoha the girl shouted, the ein meishiyala, nobody helped her because nobody could hear, right? That's the Pashtab Shah. The Tzemach Tzedek attached to Zeh. Shagam We're talking about naira, which goes on the neshama. Is besada the liyuma says in a field of klipa, besada which is like midbar. The yaseidim is moreover shezegaram that the fact that she allowed herself to be in that field, and of course, neshamas don't get to choose their life. The Abishta brings the neshama into this world, and sometimes Hashem puts us in places of sada the liyuma says without giving us a choice. Because the neshama is in a sada del yomaze, klipa attacks her and she cries out. And ain meshia lahine, gamaz even then, harotzon da neshami be gedusha. The will of the neshama is in holiness, vitzayekas, and she cries out. Be mar nafsha with the bitterness of her soul, as that she esav ish tada machazik bo. The fact that klipa holds onto her tzar ka naira, and here comes the chap. Aidei ze ain meshia. But the Rebbe Taichas don't read it ain't read it ayin ayin meshiyala. In other words, when the Jew is the furthest, the awakening of the Jew is the closest to the truth of what a Jew is, and the truth of what a Jew is that his relationship with the Eibush is not teira mitzvah; it's himself. Like the famous teira of Baal Shem Tev, which you've heard so many times, that the Baal Shem Tev said halavai ba kedesh chazisicha. David the Melech is out in the midbar Yehud, and he says Cain ba kedesh chazisicha. So Rabbi Hashem Tev said, don't say Cain, say Halavai. David is saying, I wish I desired you, Abishter, so much when I was in the Kodesh, as I desire you now. In other words, when you're just in the darkest place, the deepest level of the Pintele is brought out very acutely, very clear. In Sadadil Yomazeh, and it affects an Aliyah in the Yom Amitas HaRachamim that are waking this Yid up. Vayadeh and through this Ayin Meshiyala, not nobody helps her. But the help comes from the level of ayin shnim shechlo Yeshua, that the salvation comes min bechinas ayin shalomayla miyishdalshlos. Vekivan shegilu irotz napni midi Yisrael. Whereas, in as much as this darkness, these challenges, don't only reveal a Yid's desire to do tshuva and learn Torah and do mitzvahs, but the truth of what a Jew is. Shemishat tzar shem ba'atzmos is one of the ibishter who ayde a tshuva the Yisrael. It's a result of the tshuva shayot chila. Because they found themselves in this dark place. So the Rebbe says, because they were before in a darker place, and the Yedgimu Midas Arachamim descended to take them out of that dark place. Says the Rebbe, the idea that the 13 attributes of mercy have an aliyah by descending to help a Yid is dafke, is more, by descending and being drawn below, the aided as to all them to wake up a person who's not stam in sade, but sade de liyuma. It's be ikir aday shem eidim mis eila by waking up those that are yitchila b'tachas and they go farther away. You know this. This this is a a theme of the Rebbe. This is a big part of the Rebbe's Torah. Is the whole union of tshuv. You know the Rebbe has a maimed which came out mugi and nun beis. On v'hoya b'yeim hu you talk about shefer gadol. And what the Rebbe says in that maimed is that tshuva has to be awakened. And the argument is that the deeper the darkness the person is in, the deeper the awakening of the tshuva is going to be. And the final argument is that when a person is very deeply hidden in golos, in darkness, you talk about shefa gadol. No one has to build a shefa, it sounds itself. When a person is in the worst kind of darkness, the neshama is awakened by itself. In other words, the darker, the more remote, the place of the yid, the deeper the expression of the Yid's atmos 
oneness with HaKadosh Baruch which is hard to tell you to and tshuva. And therefore the Rebbe argues this entire Patek Zion spoke about many things but it made one point that when Yed Gimel Midas Arach Mutra Giluyim help a Yid get in touch with what he is which is called Anil Daidi, which is Etzem the Yed Gimel Midas Arach and themselves are elevated from Giluyim to Etzem. So in other words it seems like it's a vertical a pshetl that the, that the, 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 the Yed Gimel Midas Arach wake up a Yid they don't only wake up a year for Teiro Mitzvah and Shovah, they wake up a year for Anila Doidi to express a year's Dvekis and Alkus, and the Yedgim and Mitzvah and Achman themselves have an Aliyah. Why is this so important? I'll tell you why it's important. Because this answers the question which has been bothering the Rebbe in this Maimir, and so many other Maimorim, as I explained at length yesterday. Anila Doidi is Elo, right? Vedadi Ali is what? The Alta Rebbe says that at least Tishrei. So the Rebbe asked the question if Anila Doidi is Elo, and Vedadi Li is Tishrei, how come El is Rasha Tevis, Ani Ledoidi Vedadi Li? And now we know the answer. Because Vedadi Li is Melech Basada. Vedadi Li is the Yedgim Amit Yisrachim which arouses Ani Ledoidi. And Ani Ledoidi comes first, even though chronologically the Vedadi Li happens earlier. Because the Ani Ledoidi causes that the Vedadi Li should be on the same Adrega as the Ani Ledoidi. So let me, I'm going to read now Pedic Ches. But I want to share something with you. I want to tell you a shtickle story, a history, a piece of my life. Yeah, I was in 770. I learned in 770 as an altar bocher in 1988, Memches, Memtes. And there was the Rosh Hashiva, Allah Shalom, the Chayn Levrach, Rabbi Pekarski. Rabbi Pekarski was a Jew from a different generation. Rabbi Pekarski was a Boki B'Shas. Rabbi Pekarski knew Agaval Metayra. Rabbi Pekarsky was also a brilliant orator. He was an incredible public speaker. He was very easy to listen to. He was just a delight. He was Pamish entertaining. Sometimes they go to a Rosh Hashiva Shir because Rosh Hashiva is so busy in Iyun. He's so nervous. He's so intense in trying to understand. He's very hard to follow. Rabbi Pekarsky was very easy to follow. So they were learning Masech the Gedushin. I was learning. I wasn't learning Gedushin. I was learning yet a day. Whatever I was doing. But I never missed a shir. Tuesdays or Wednesdays, I went to the shir. And I remember for shir and I'd heard from Yishiyurim, because they left a lasting mark. One of the things I remember him saying, and I actually looked it up and I had a hard time finding it, is that in Mesech the Krisis, Perik Vav, Perik Zayin, in the Pirish HaMishnah, Isla Rambam, there's something called Nekuda Haflo, Nekida Haflu, he called it. And the Rambam introduces us in Pirish HaMishnah and Krisis to a brilliant to a wondrous point. And I'm telling you what he said, not what I saw in the Peter Shamishnah, but what he told us in Shir. In the Peter Shamishnah, not from Kleden, but he told us in Shir. He said that to the Kedimis, there's two concepts of precedence. Precedence means what comes first and what comes second and what comes third. Kedima Bizman and Kedima Behechrich. There's chronological precedence and there's precedence by necessity. Okay, I'll give you an example. Chronological precedence is you do something and then I become aware that you did it. So you did something, whatever it is, you picked up the mail and then I saw or I heard. So I know you picked up the mail after you picked it up. Now what were to happen if I was a Prophet. I was a, uh, what's the word, a clairvoyant. And I knew today what you're going to do tomorrow. So I know now that tomorrow you're going to pick up the mail. So which came first? My knowledge of picking up the mail. So chronologically, I knew the day before you picked up the mail that you were going to pick it up. But in necessity, the only reason I know today what you're going to do tomorrow is because you're going to do it tomorrow. Right? My knowledge is based on tomorrow's actions. Vaharaya, I'm never wrong. So even though chronologically I know what you're going to do before you did it, but in Kedima Behechrech, in precedence of necessity, your action of tomorrow comes before my action of today. My knowledge of today. Anila Doidi is a Yid getting in touch with how a Yid is one with the Ebsht. Vedoidi Li is Melech Basada. That's how the Rebbe touches it in his mind. Now, which comes first, Anila Deidi or Malach Basada? 
Malach Basada comes first. Because the king is in the field, we approach the king. So in Kedima Bizman, in chronological precedence, it should say, Dei the king comes into the field, that's Vedai and we respond and do Tshuva Nila Daidi. But in Kedima Behechrech, in, in, in precedence by necessity, Anila Daidi comes first. You know why? Because it's higher. Or to say it deeper, because Anila Daidi is going to raise up the Vedai Now let's learn it. Says the Rebbe Azeh, who understood the Teres to the Kasha, which has been bothering the Rebbe in this Maimon and the Maimon of Tafshir Lamed Beis and possibly another Maimonim. Why does the Alter Rebbe say that Vedai Dili is an Elul, Vedai Dili is Yamim Nerayim? So in the other Maimon, he gave a Maisim at Bittl. In this Maimed, he gives a Maisim at Yiluyim, and that's the two words, Vedai Dili, which are the last two words of the Rosh Tevis of Elul. It's primarily an illusion. That's the 13 attributes of mercy which is revealed in Elul to wake up the Anila Deidi. King in the field is before you approach the king. Anila Deidi is approaching the king. King in the field happens first. Nevertheless, nevertheless, in the wording of the Pasuk, Anila Deidi comes first, literally comes second. You know why? That Even though the king being in the field, which is the 13 attributes of mercy, is the Nesinas Keach, Allah, Veda, Daniel, Daidi, it sets up, it gives the power for us to do tshuva and approach the king. And notice he uses the word Daniel, Nesinas Keach, even though Lech Eidu, we now agree that it's a Sederus. says, the Rebbe Ki Bepnimi because even though chronologically, Vedaidi Li, Melech Basada, happens before Anil Daidi approaching the king, but in Chesidus, Anil Daidi, Aveda Saadam, the Yid's service, the Yid's doing tshuva is l'maylam evadei dili gilam. It's above the yilam in Sarachman. Why? Because now sif vav v'sif zayin. Shakavona ba gil the gilam in Sarachman. The gilam in Sarachman are awakening us. They're not only awakening us to do tshuva. They're awakening us to discover what a yid is, which is even deeper than teira mitzvah. So he spells it out. Bechtei le'eder aveda sa'adam to arouse a person's service. And we discussed in Sif Zayin, Aideze Nasa Ilui, we had given me the Sarachem and the 13 attributes of mercy have an aliyah by being Maila Oz. So the Rebbe says like this, what did Gimel Mid Sarachem give us is two things. Number one, Ha'ilui Shanasa Bagilim Al Maila Aideze Nasa Ilamata, Bechtei Leider Sadaf. When did Gimel Mid Sarachem come from heaven to earth to wake us up? There's a Yerid Sarach Aliyah in the Gimel Mid Sarachem. That's number one, Sif Zayin. Number two, in addition to the Yedgil Mitzvah Achma having an aliyah by simply coming down into this world, the Yedgil Mitzvah Achma have another aliyah when we respond to that revelation and grow. And Kal Gwaz Zakadish Baruch. But are coming close to the Kadish Baruch, which is called Tshuva, says the Rebbe Bazay Atzme Shnei and Yaran. There's two ideas. Idea number one, Ha'ilu Shemitada Tainuk de la Maila Shabaveda Sadam, or Befrat. What the pleasure that Hashem gets from our Teir and Mitzvahs, and especially from our Tshuva, which is included in the words, but then comes the second. This revealed subsequent to that. The delight that Hashem has in a Yid himself, where it's not about a Yid serving Hashem, but a Yid being one with Hashem, because the Jew is one with Hashem by essence. In other words, Shadish Hanishamis, which is Lamailam HaShadish HaTeiro Mitzvahs, and even Shaya the Mitzvah Tshuva, which the Rebbe calls Panam Sheikh HaKes. So the Yedgil Mitzvah Rachamim descend, Yedid Yitzherach Aliyah. Yedgil Mitzvah Rachamim arouses us to do Tshuva and Teiro Mitzvahs, Yedid Yitzherach Aliyah. The Yedgil Mitzvah Rachamim descend to help a Yid wake up the Anila Deidi, that a yid's one of the, with Hashem is higher than Teira Mitzvah and Tshuva. This is the ultimate aliyah in the Yid Gil Mitzvah So the Rebbe concludes. Since the awakening of Tshuva in a person, which causes the Gili upon him, Yafaz upon him, Sheikhis, boy, the Hagilu de Vedeidi Li is based on the Abishter's Yid Gil Mitzvah awakening us. Hagilu de Yid Gil Mitzvah from which called Melach Basada. The Yid's revealing, the Anila Daidi, which is service to Hashem, his own avoida, 
the way it uplifts the Vedei Diliyas, Shagama Gil, the Vedei Dili, Mizgala La Tain, Mizala La Tain, the Panam Yafta, the Panam Jesus. In other words, basically, Yagim Misarachm become Etzim. The Yagim Misarachm, which are about Chuv and Tayro Mitras, are raised as the Madrega of Anila Daidi. So, what's the answer? Anila Daidi comes after Vedei Dili in time. But because of the source of Anila Daidi, which is higher than the Daidi Li, and the Anila Daidi is going to raise up the Vedaidi Li, raise up the Yilgim Midasar Achrem, to the Madrega of Anila Daidi, it's written first in the Pasuk because it's higher. So the Pasuk is not describing the events as they happen in time. The Pasuk is describing the events how they transpire ultimately. In the end, Anila Daidi raises up the Vedaidi Li, even though initially the Vedaidi Li inspired the Anila Daidi. And that's the answer. It's very ephemeral, honestly. It's very hard to touch. But that's the answer. They have a finish it. Through our work and through our labor. Especially the work done in El. And of course, according to this, the work done in El is Tere Mitzvah. The work done in El is Chub. But most importantly, the work done in El is revealing Yisrael the Malka B'chadai. How we just one with the Kaddish Baruch and Nisqa B'chad of Mamish will merit speedily. The Gula said that to the future, Gyulash Azia Mitis Ha'inyan, there'll be the ultimate idea of Marapan Shaykhis. We'll see the laughing face of Hashem, which will reverberate, and the laughing face of a Yid, how Yid and Hashem are one. Akmavur, Bakama Makamir, so it says in Chazal, that there's going to be a Knigia. Knigia means a, uh, what do they call it? The Romans used to have gladiators. That's what Knigia means, gladiators. Shasana Kaddish Baruch Lasa, it says that the Kim Lazalav, Hashem is going to make Lazar loving. But that gladiators is going to be an Indian from Tainug. That's the fight between the Sherebat and the Levyasan. Shiru Begile, they're going to see in a revealed way. All of the battles between good and evil in this world, laughter and pleasure. And